So, okay, I, I, I want to really thank everyone. A uh, really phenomenal discussion today. And I think, um, in a way, you summed it up for us by saying uh, you, you leave here with a framework and not specific answers, because I think uh, that's what we're trying to um, establish, is that it is no longer at least considered black and white. It's new shades of gray. Thank you, Margaret. <laughs> so that'll haunt me the rest of the day. Um, and that we really do want to figure out ways um, that we can work with each other. A couple of things that I take away from the day um, that we really did come up with some bigger recommendations about how we frame this, about the way that we look at uh, the disclosure of relationships instead of using the language of conflict of interest. I really love the idea of looking at both risk and benefit. We often frame things in terms of risk and forget the benefit and then we don't articulate those well for the very people who need them. Um, I think we also uh, talked about, and, and, and thank you, uh, Heather, for bringing this up and others, that we are often looking at innovation in research itself, and here we actually need innovation in the systems, which organizations like Faster Cures are always looking for and looking at. And then I think there were some weedy things that we certainly could take forward, things like what should be the standards for disclosure, what does that evidence-based policy look like, uh, what about collaborations between IRBs and conflict of interest bodies and universities, how do we manage the prospect of conflict of interest before it happens or the disclosure relationships so that even trials are managed better before they actually begin? Um, and then what does uh, a movement towards some kind of harmonized or, or um, uh, a, a kind of bringing together of conflict of interest or, or these kinds of policies? Um, it may be, and we heard this once or twice today, that we need some kind of consensus recommendations. Um, that is a, you know, a fairly formal process, whether it's done uh, by the IOM or by NIH or other folks, and that it may be time for that sort of thing. And then I think the last thing I'll say is um, I often begin um, workshops like these um, saying that typically I'm supposed to say, here's my blank slide, I have no conflict of interest, but actually I have the largest conflict of interest of anybody in the room because I represent my family who lives with genetic disease and also all the families that do live with disease. And that is the biggest conflict. We're not afraid of that conflict because at the end of the day, that's why we're all here. When I looked at everybody speaking today, everybody's speaking because they are the surrogate representative of the sick or in need of, of treatment person. You know, whether it's FDA representing us who need safety and efficacy, or if it's a company representing us who need to have a treatment or representing an academic institution who's willing to do the work to get it to, their, to that point. So I think somehow we need to remember, and this is back to alignment of incentives, that this is where we come from and that the urgency we feel when we're sick or when our parents are sick or when our children are sick is the urgency we need to bring forward into all these conversations and actions. And I think the ultimate thing for me is to ask how can we all risk the way the people who are sick risk every single day, the way your neighbor risks? Um, how can we risk in our relationships with each other and in that those boundaries where it feels tense so that we are making the right decision even if it's new ground? I thank you all. I thank all the panelists. Uh, join me in thanking all of you, including participants.